Welcome to the Armani Talks YouTube channel. I'm your host, Armani Talks. In this channel, I'm covering communication skills for you to level up your way with words and become much more articulate. In today's episode, we're entering the world of creativity and we're going to be breaking down a blog that I recently wrote, which is called The Eight Stunning Traits of Creative People. And I'm going to link the blog in the description box and in the pinned comment right on below, just in case you're a reader, not a watcher. Some of the traits that I'm going to be listing for creative geniuses are not going to be politically correct. However, this isn't something that I'm saying are ideals. Uh, these are traits that I've been able to observe uh, through experimentation and analysis. And the purpose of this video is to help you hopefully understand yourself better if you're someone who considers yourself highly creative and misunderstood. And another purpose of this video are for managers of people. Every now and then, uh, you see someone that's hot and cold. When they're hot, they're really hot. They're generating great ideas on autopilot. But when they're cold, they're really cold. It seems as though that they're annoying to get along with. Why can't they be more predictable? This video is going to make more sense of that and it's going to help you understand how to deal with all types of personality, especially creative people. If you're ready and excited for today's talk, go on and drop that like for me right on below. And let's get started off with the first trait, which is they may have a temper. Hey man, I don't make the rules, I'm just reporting it. A lot of creative geniuses have a temper at one stage of their life. Um, I mean, there's Walt Disney, there's Steve Jobs, there's Damon Dash, and many more other people from a variety of different industries. One of the reasons that they have a temper is because human beings predominantly think in two types of ways. One way is reductionist, where this individual is breaking uh, different things down into its smallest components and studying it, which, by the way, most people think like. And a few people out there are systems thinkers, where they see the entire vision first, and then they see the individual components. The reason that a lot of these creative geniuses uh, get angry so quick is because they're systems thinkers. They see the entire narrative, the entire vision, the entire story before their very eyes. And in the early part of their career, they're like, whoa, what is this? Uh, this may go away soon. I got to move with urgency. And they understand that they need different people in order to help them bring this vision to life. The problem is that a lot of these other people are reductionist thinkers. They're just seeing the individual components and they don't understand the bigger picture. So certain times they'll be like, hey, um, I'm going to be uh, one week late. Now, from their perspective, they're only going to be one week late. From the creative genius's perspective, what happens is they're like, one week late, you fool. Don't you understand? Uh, until you get your work in, this team, this team, and this team cannot begin their work. For the creative genius, everything is connected. So a lot of times, they try to enforce urgency through their temper. Later on in their career, though, they're often uh, a lot more mellow. They calmed down. And there's two reasons for this. One reason is just because maturity hit them. And another reason is because they're able to now systematize their creativity. They do not only rely on inspiration, uh, they're relying now on inspiration along with certain processes that allows them to get creative at will. So that's one of the reasons that they may have a temper on them. The second trait of a creative genius is that they're okay with being alone. Uh, this is something that you want to listen to, especially if you're a manager. A lot of times for these corporations, you know, whenever they're looking to generate more ideas, what they do is they get a group of people, they stick them in a room, and they're like, go on, generate some ideas. This is not a bad idea. However, for a creative genius, you'll see that they're often quiet in these meetings. One of the reasons why is because they prefer to generate their ideas alone. This is because uh, creativity for them is predominantly born from inspiration. And one of the most important words in inspiration is in. 
So when they are by themselves, they are completely inhibited. And that's when in 10 seconds, they can generate better ideas than a group in 10 hours. This is just what often happens. So if you see someone that's highly disengaged in group settings, it may be smart to give them their alone time so they can prove themselves on their own. The third trait is that they're control freaks. What does this mean? This means that they want to own the entire supply chain. They dream of a moment where they own something from the beginning all the way up until the end because a lot of the times when the supply chain gets too complex, what happens is that a lot of deadlines are missed and it goes from being a creative company into a political company. This creative genius is like, man, it would be awesome if I owned everything from beginning uh, to end. Now listen, this doesn't mean that they don't delegate. Uh, a creative person understands the value of delegating, but make no mistake about it. They often are perfectly aware of what they're delegating and the quality of work that is being submitted. One example is Vince McMahon, who is the CEO of World Wrestling Entertainment. And as a CEO, he has the big picture understanding of the company, but it's been reported that he also knows the tiny little details. He's perfectly aware of the font sizes on his WWE magazines. So in some ways, he too is a control freak. The fourth trait is that they have a few friends. I actually think that this is wise just for people in general. In my book, The Charisma King, I talk about a simple formula on how to build a social circle. Have a few friends and have a lot of acquaintances. Friends are people that someone can form a deep relationship with. And this is what I like to call the nucleus. While acquaintances are people that you can have a surface level relationship with and there's value being uh, provided on both ends, I like to view them as the valence electrons. Well, with creative people, they follow this to the T. It's because very few people in this life are creators and consumers. Most of them are just consumers. So when someone is consistently consuming, they cannot necessarily understand the mindset of someone who is uh, consuming and creating. The consumer is much more passive, while the creative person is much more active. So just for the sake of clarity, they prefer to have a few friends so they can keep the important thing, the important thing, and the important thing are the ideas. The next trait is that they're highly curious. I mean, this is pretty obvious. Whenever you're not feeling creative, uh, chances are that uh, learning has been inhibited because when there's a learning practice, which is systematized, which means that you know exactly throughout the day or throughout the week when you're going to be learning, then creativity is often a byproduct. And what makes learning highly easy is curiosity. So this one's pretty self-explanatory. They're curious, they ask a lot of questions, and they always want to know more. Another trait is that they don't like authority. Now granted, in order to be a great leader, someone once needed to be a follower. Okay, the, the platitude is now out of the way. For creative geniuses, they understand this, but one thing that they don't like is being told what to do. Like, you have to do it because I told you to do it, or um, it's always been like this. Uh, that's why they don't prefer the, the bureaucracy of big organizations too much. They often thrive in small organizations when they're given more uh, ability to do something. Uh, this is actually the uh, mantra that Netflix operates with, where in their peak stages, they found the most creative people and they allowed them to do their own things. So they're not over here micromanaging these people. If you micromanage a creative person too much, either they are going to become furious or they are going to become highly disengaged. The uh, next trait is that they don't follow the herd. I mean, it's simple because uh, the, the herd, it's a symbol for people who all walk one way. Most individuals do not think. What they do is they adopt the ideas that resonate with their nervous system the most, 
without much forms of critical thinking, and then they repeat it. It's like they've convinced themselves of it, and that's how the herd often moves. While the creative person is a man or a woman of thought. So they're not going to just be like, okay, well, everyone's moving this way, so I need to move this way too. But also, they're not just being uh, different for the sake of being different. Instead, uh, they are not following the herd because they have accumulated knowledge from multiple domains. Now they can generate insights on autopilot, and they're clearly seeing something that other people are not seeing. And since they know about so many different fields, they don't think it's up to them to explain to the herd uh, to follow their way. They're going to keep the important thing the important thing. And if others want to come their way, they always can. But the creative person is not someone who is a follower. And the last trait is that they're prolific. See, the whole quantity versus quality debate is pretty futile because in terms of getting better at anything, what needs to be done is practice. We talking about practice, we are talking about practice. And practice is another word for quantity. Some of the best creative minds out there, you may either be seeing their quantity in a public sphere, where you're seeing them getting up and failing in public, or they're doing it behind the scenes. A lot of the greatest painters, they don't make all the paintings that they did before their hit public. So just because you don't see it, does not mean that they weren't prolific behind the stages. Anyone, for them to get great, they need to be prolific, they need to produce a lot, see what works, see what doesn't work, and reduce what doesn't work, and keep doubling down on what does work. And by the way, yeah, there's one bonus um, trait, and this is the whole trait of credentials. A creative person is capable of learning uh, from anyone. Uh, they can learn just as equally from a five-year-old who knows how to play the piano very well uh, to a Harvard professor. They don't view the world in terms of credentials, uh, master's degrees, and all of that. It's not like they disrespect it. It's just for their mind, they have all equal vision. They can learn from anyone or anything. So those were the traits of a creative superstar. Uh, did some of the traits resonate with you? Uh, do you know uh, some people uh, who fit the traits that I described? If so, go on and drop that like on the video and share this video on your social media of choice so others can become aware of whether or not they have the traits of a creative genius. Thank you very much for joining the Armani Talks YouTube channel, and I'll catch you next time.